crawling, which means that every time you go to log in to the system, it pulls the entire password file and clear text across the network. Uh, and then if, if you can run code on the system, uh, it's very easy to bypass what it's authentication. It's very much like cracking a, a shareware MP3 player or something like that. Uh, instead of jumping here when the registration code is bad, you jump there. Uh, so the password authentication was straight up. You connect, you attach one debugger, or you go in and modify the code, and you just tell it to jump to the left instead of jumping to the right. A one-bit change to the file. You make your own login process that it's the exact same thing. And this is the thing, if you have the entirety of your HMI software running as it's currently logged in Windows user, you cannot protect it. It's going to take some sort of architectural change to actually implement any of the security features. So uh, it's not an isolated problem. This is the first zero day of the day, uh, or this call, rather. Right? Uh, and this is in Kev Infolink HMI 50023. Uh, They've been notified they're going to fix this. I actually got an email from them saying that they're, they're planning to upgrade the encryption on their passwords. I don't know what that means, but I guess we'll see. Um, so in documentation, it says that you can restrict access to a certain project by defining the required access levels. Uh, so essentially, you can have multiple users. They can all have access levels uh, between 0 and 200. So you can get very finely detailed with what you allow these people to do and what you don't allow them to do. Um, but again, just like the IPAs, and just like a lot of these packages, I bet you can find another one that does this. They encrypt, quote, their password with an exclusive or key. Same key for every user, same key every installation. So, uh, Crypto 101, first day, how do we actually do with that? How do we store a password securely? Uh, and it's not with what you would normally call encryption. If you want to do a patch, uh, if somebody tells you that they're securely encrypted their password, it doesn't matter if they've encrypted it with exclusive or, or if they've encrypted it with AES-256. Uh, if, if you have to have a key to decrypt that password, that key has to be stored somewhere. And if, again, it's, if the architecture of your system is such that, that you can't protect those files and you can't protect those keys, then, uh, then there's, you, you're really no better off than the exclusive or honest. But you can store passwords securely and at least make the attacker have to crack a hack. So uh, the idea is we have our password, we have a random salt, we, uh, we put the password and the salt together, we run it through a hashing algorithm, whatever you want to use, honestly, is better than what's going on here. Uh, MD5, SSJ1, 256, whatever you want to use. Uh, you store the hash and you store the salt. And this then, as I said on the previous slide, if you encrypt that password, it has to be stored somewhere on the system. Uh, and it's even worse, of course, if we do it with this core. Uh, because we can do an easy, known plain text, plain text attack on the core. I have my own copy of the HMI software. I set up my own users, their own passwords and everything. And you've got your truth table for uh, XOR. Uh, it's exclusive or if one or the other is one, then the result is one. If they're both the same, it's zero. And uh, people use this because it's the basis of a, an unbreakable uh, crypto scheme. It's the basis of a one-time path. If you're trying to communicate with somebody and you can pre-share a long enough key, you can communicate very securely uh, using the exclusive core as a one-time path. It's not for password storage. So uh, what we, all we have to do is we take our encrypted password, we exclusive or against the plain text key that we know, the plain text password that we already know because we're doing this in our environment. And we just to store those together and now it pops the key. So, because uh, as, as the property of the exclusive core, A, X, or B equals C, and B, X, or C equals A. So, for that, we take a field trip to the infolink DM. So, the infolink, we have. So with Implink, we have this whole system, and I'm going to use the Implink demo project, which I've actually gone through around with the uh, user list on. So we can go to the properties of the project, and we have our security features here, where we have users, we have access levels for them, things like that. And each object in the system, we can 
settings where somebody has to have an access level of something or another to, to, uh, to be able to use and are modified. Uh, you can disallow or allow users the ability to use, to, to modify the user list. Uh, you can 